final segment of conversations on sugar we're going to discuss saving the sugar industry and whether or not it's worth saving um, I've heard varying views on a number of issues today on how what what are the issues affecting sugar and what are some of your positions on sugar is the industry worth saving first of all and I'm gonna ask Mr. Chan to start that discussion Certainly, um, we cannot afford at this time to do away with our industry. Mm -hmm. Our industry is pivotal. So thousands of people depend upon the sugar industry, directly and indirectly. And uh, we cannot afford to have it wish away like that uh, by the whims and fancy of some people, as we see. Um, we were told that Wales will be closed. There was no discussion about this with the stakeholders. Then we were told that you are consolidating East Damara Estate, that you're closing the LBI cultivation and have it have that estate into one, so you're consolidating it. Then soon after, a few months after, we, we heard that I thought, um, East Damara Estate will be closed, and so will be resolved, and they sell out of um, the... Now, Many panelists brought it out, and the first set of panelists did say about the importance to their lives mm -hmm. when you when you look at sugar. Sugar is too important to them. They, they cannot find any other work, and look what is playing out at Wales. That is demonstrating what will be the position with so many others in the other two estates, um, particularly in Rosal. Will Rosal workers in Bobby's, and it was said by the panelists in the first discussion, mm. that they don't have, simply they don't have other jobs to do. Um, the NIS depend upon that. Incidentally, lots of workers would not be able to get their NIS pension because they would, they would ever get a job. Those who still are young mm. and may have two, three hundred contributions where they need to send off with the yeah. contribution to get a pension. Many of them, they, they, they will be shattered of receiving a pension in their old age from the NIS. So, our foreign exchange dependence, um, jobs, um, they, they, so many businesses depend upon sugar. What is being noted Wales will tell you what will happen to these people. You just look, we had 1,000 prisoners at the um, big dam. And uh, what has happened here? And that, number of prisoners is giving us so much headache now, so many problems. <laughs> when you will add it, thousands down the road in so much years time, mm -hmm. what will happen to this country? Mm -hmm. We will be much more crime infested. We will be much more difficulty with having our foreign exchange maintained. Mm -hmm. the, 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 you know the our dollar slide? And no doubt it will slide more because they will have to use money from the foreign uh, reserve mm -hmm. to keep putting in a deal to keep your um, exchange rates stabilized. So the effects, the number of effects are, are too much and the rash decision that was made need to be looked back. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the speakers said it just now, we need to have a concerted effort by all the stakeholders to find a way forward, even at this stage. Mm -hmm. We discussed a number of things today which include the fact that the, the sugar company itself needs to address production, it needs to address what, what is doing at that level, um, there's some of the concerns about yields and stuff, um, and diversifying or trying to find ways to make money. Um, how do they go about doing that? Uh, there's even a number of things, uh, and this is not anything new in the case of sugar. They've mm -hmm. always talked about vertical integration, meaning mm -hmm producing many products from the cane plant. Mm -hmm. um, cane, the cane plant is a very versatile mm -hmm. um, plant in itself. Sugar being one of the, the, one of the products we produce, but there, there are other things, um, and we've seen guys who are moving in that direction. I was on the Sugar Commission of Inquiry representing the union, and one of the things the commission f recommended strongly is moving into electricity generation, mm -hmm. using bagasse as your fuel. We have that already at scale, and, and the operators at that plant, SCI, and I'm meeting already this year, told that at the minimum they would have earned nine and a half billion dollars last year. Mm -hmm. um, guys who over the years have done a number of studies and found such operations to be feasible, Alvin, Blairmont, and more. 
and sending out similar studies and what you want to IFLA. So that's one area alone where there's a lot of money to be made. Um, packet sugar also is another area in which mm -hmm. the commission read said that packet sugar is where you get your highest return yeah. on. Mm -hmm. um, you get upwards of 23, 25 cents US per pound. Um, so there's, there's two plants right now, one at Edmore and one at Vermont. Aggregate, you can produce 45 to 50,000 tons of sugar per year. And there's a market out there and a growing market. Mm -hmm. So that's another way you can make money. Um, we saw uh, maybe about two weeks back DDL announcing the launch of the GI for Demerara yeah. around geographical indicator. Mm -hmm. Guys, who goes on moving in a direction to have Demerara molasses and mm -hmm. sugar register. Mm -hmm. With that indicator, you are now allowed to have some protectionism right. for Demerara. Mm -hmm. And that in itself, with an aggressive marketing campaign, mm -hmm. you, th that's another way you can make even break increase revenue, augment revenues. Distilling is another option. Um, mm -hmm which they have done studies and that is recommended, that is found to be viable. Another big one which the commission also recommended is the refined sugar market. Mm -hmm. There's a market in CARICOM for about 200,000 tons of sugar, refined sugar that is. And if you manage to produce 75% and greater, you get the seed protection, which is about 40%. So right away, a refinery of that magnitude will allow us to have a, a lucrative market in CARICOM. So mm -hmm. it's not a lost cause as many people want to make. Mm -hmm. See, there's so many other things that sugar can do, and there might be more which haven't been mentioned. But mm -hmm. all of these are things which have been studied and found to be viable already. So it's not a matter of reinventing the wheel, so to speak. We have a history in this part of the world of where most of our natural um, products are extracted and then taken to other places to be refined. And I'm going to just lump sugar along that same category, another natural resource. Um, that is, but over the years there have been recommendations to do better, and um, you know a number of ways to do that. You've just listed a few. What has tied our hands? There, there seems not to be the will in Gaisuku, and um, the forward thinking, the vision is not here. And one of the things that has to be done, um, for instance, you already have the two packaging plants you are getting more in earnings from the packaging sugar, yeah. from the package sugar, yet you are not exploiting that. Mm. Then the, the problem itself is your production, which would have been mentioned in one of the mm. earlier um, segments. Your production is simply low. And because your production is low, you're not able to fulfill the, yeah. the markets that are there. So, while we are saying that look, if you are now in a crunch position and you need to have an improvement, then you need to look at areas that you could utilize your sugar production and other products from sugar to ensure that you are benefiting from a maximum output of revenue. And the, the question about the yields, your level of production, it, definitely has to improve because um, by improving your production level you could then benefit from the economies of scale and you could be able to have um, the capacity to refine the capacity to do white sugar you know they have been doing white sugar already at iFlot so it's nothing strange to Guyana and the studies had shown when Skeldon was established that an adjoining component would have been a distillery and also, um, also a refinery. Mm -hmm. So those who would have conceived Skeldon and who would have conceptualized the idea of Skeldon complex already had in the planning distillery, cogeneration, refining of sugar. And what needs to be done now is the management of the company needs to look at these options. Mm -hmm. And then it comes to the question of funding, which we yeah, also which, talked yeah, about. Yeah. Um, according to Gaisuku documents, they have said that they are selling lands to the tune of about $36 billion, mm -hmm. that they will sell some lands to achieve that money. So immediately, this money could go towards paying off some of their short-term debts. They could have more working capital and they could have money to invest. Another option also is to look at having joint venture programs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with 
private partners so that there could be investment and there could be the injection of the capital you need for these different um, projects, which of course will be able to garner more revenue from what you already have and you know, to eventually make you back viable mm -hmm. as an industry. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you, all three of you, to probably list one or two ways, um, other than what we have mentioned here this morning, um, on how to move forward on an industry that is so critical and you've listed all those ways that they're critical, but how can it form a, na a national conversation so everybody can see that this is a very important industry and how can it move forward? I'm gonna start with you. Well, I mean, like you said, it's of critical importance and uh, other panelists would have shared what would happen without Daisuku. Mm -hmm. You need to imagine what would happen without Daisuku. Um, the linkages Daisuku has as a company and with the workers to other businesses in the country. What would happen to the overall demand, aggregate demand in the economy? How, how would it contract in terms of government income, NIS and income taxes? What will happen there? So there's a lot, you're creating a lot of holes which we have no answers on how to fill them mm -hmm. as yet. So it, it has to become a national conversation because everyone, man, woman and child, will be affected in one way or another. Spending priorities may have to change. Mm -hmm. If you have more crime, you're talking about more policing, more for the judiciary and the prison services and so on. So there's a lot of things which are... Spin-offs. A lot of spin-offs, right, which need have seemingly have not been taken into account. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that we don't reach a situation where down the road if we have these kind of regrets and people are saying we, we should have thought of it then, not now. What's the um, Well, a few years ago, Professor Clive Thomas wrote in one of his work that the way to save the sugar industry is to look at how you could be able to move into other areas from sugar. One of the things he spoke about is um, animal feed mm -hmm. and byproducts from sugar. He's in the driver's seat now. Mm -hmm. And it is time that as head of the company, being the chairman of the board, along with the government, that they need to sit down and open their eyes mm -hmm. to what is the reality. The reality is this decision is going to hurt the nation. And therefore, they need to look at how they can absorb that shock. And the way to absorb the shock is to ensure that the industry continues to operate as an industry and it is being channeled towards being a viable industry. We have all the potentials. We have everything that is required. All the land, we have the expertise. We have been growing sugar in this country for more than 350 years. Mm -hmm. So sugar is not a new crop. Sugar is not an experiment. And sugar over the years had bad patches and it came out successfully. Mm -hmm. In 1990, you had 129, 20 tons of sugar. And then a few years after, the production moved to 300,000 tons. So certainly, there is the potential. What we have to do is to ensure that this nation is led into a way that it benefits the people. And one of that easy way is to engage the stakeholders open your eyes and open your ears and listen to the union and listen to the workers and listen to other people who are in the industry who has a contribution to make. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chan, I'm going to ask you to make the final say. Okay, um, the point was made by our friend Kamit Pandey. At this point in time, you just need to move your production to about 30,000 tons. Mm -hmm. And from sugar revenue alone, you'll be able to um, able to move the industry forward, you're able to pay your bills, you will not be, de be dependent on the government. Mm -hmm. But what you need is a political will. And this is lacking. Um, it is clear that all the promises that were made before the elections have been betrayed. No, no promise, none of the promises have been upheld and we saw we are moving in this direction. So. Uh, immediately, without even um, going to these other ventures, 
we need to have immediately um, look at our production. Mm -hmm. We need to have immediately back the cogen facility, mm -hmm. which is in the hands of the SGI, which is a government yeah. agency, back into sugar. So you will be able to have a, a, a much revenue. But, and then you have to look at the team of the management. You have the people there who has decided that sugar must be miniaturized, sugar should go. They, they, they would prefer to have sugar going. So here you don't have the political will. And you are disregarding the economic consequences, you are disregarding the social consequences. And you're creating a situation about the financial implications. And you are making that a big issue. And you're not coming out truthfully. We, we spoke just now about the debt of guys ago. Mm -hmm. And we said it is not what you're saying. And you you keep saying things like that. You keep saying to the public that look, our price of sugar in the world market is twelve cent per pound a few weeks ago. At this point in time today is fourteen point six one cent per pound. But that price has nothing to do with our contractual market. Mm -hmm. We have market in Europe, we have in the Caribbean, we have in Guyana. We are not a producer of a million tons of sugar. Millions of tons. We are talking about managing a production of 300 to 350,000 tons of sugar, which is within our capability. But there are people there who has a political mission, um, who wants to, whatever their objective, and who they want to be their victim, they are moving in that other direction. And the decisions that they are taking will haunt us, will haunt this country for many, many years. Um, I'd like to thank you for that very passionate ending to this um, session. This would bring us to the end of the serial conversations on the sugar industry. Thank you.